Welcome to another unit on social network analytics. This time with a unit on the closeness centrality. The closeness centrality gives us an information on, yeah, well, obviously how close to the other nodes the current node is. Or in other words, if it's relatively centrally situated in the network or whether it's rather on the borders. It's a rather, a rather a marginal node as compared to the rest of the network. In other words, if we have a node with a relatively high closeness, this means this node is not only connected to a lot of different other nodes, but it's also relatively near to all of these other nodes. So the shortest paths to a lot of other nodes are very short. If we keep this in mind that we need a lot of short distances, then the formula for this also becomes relatively self-evident. Because this builds on the idea that we simply consider the shortest distance of our particular node to all other nodes, If we sum up then all the shortest distances and take the inverse of this sum, we actually get the result as we wanted to. Because if we have short distances, means that the part D here, the distance between any node Y and our current node X is relatively small. So the sum over all distances is relatively small and the inverse is relatively large. So we get a larger closeness if the distances are relatively small. So far so good. This works decently well, but we have a problem if we have a network which is not fully connected. Meaning if it's impossible to get from one node To a specific other node. In this case, we simply set the closeness to zero. We could easily imagine this as also setting the distance to impossible, meaning to infinity, and summing up infinity with anything else always gives infinity. So we have one divided by infinity, which, well, at least from a limit perspective, would go towards zero. So this actually makes sense to say if this node is disjoint from the network, is not part of the current network, or is in one part of the network and this part is disjoint from the another part, then the closeness is zero. We can also take up the idea, expand this a little bit. And that's basically what we see up here is going back to the publication as listed below here from 1950, whereas the more modern version dates back only a few years to 2006. And here we use this formula instead. Well, what's the difference? The idea here is that we take a small base, which is A, That's the value between 0 and 1. And we use the distances as exponent. Meaning, if we have a relatively large distance, we have a large exponent, a number between 0 and 1 to the power of a relatively large value becomes only smaller. So, large values, large distances, lead to smaller parts, lead to a smaller closeness. On the other hand, if the exponents are small, the result will be comparatively large. We get a comparatively large closeness. What's the difference between those two parts? Well, the advantage of using the second one is that distances or an increase in distances it's considered even more severe than in this case. Here we have exponential effects. So only a slight increase in the distance 
has significant effects on the closeness. So in this case, we actually consider closeness, the closeness much, much more critical than in this case. So here you only have a high closeness if you're really well connected and usually only directly connected to any of the nodes of the network. Here, doesn't matter if you have a short distance, short path of two or three, it's not as severe. Here, it's more severe, so only very, very short distances lead to a closeness which is even a little bit above zero. And well, that's the basic idea. However, if we want to do this by hand, this would mean we would have to calculate a lot of shortest distances. So this would mean a lot of work. And that's why usually to get this done, we use some kind of computer program for this. Or in other words, here we're going to use Gephi for this. And I want to just switch to Gephi to illustrate this. Here with Gephi, I have prepared two examples. One example for a larger undirected network and a second example for a smaller directed network. If I start with the undirected network, we can go to statistics, the statistics menu. And here in the third version, if you listen to the part on betweenness, you already seen this. In the third part, if we click on run, we could use normalized statistics, which for the closeness as well as for the betweenness do a lot of interesting things, but do not normalize the centrality values. So I would always keep it as is. Click OK. Then the second value you get here are the centrality values. Here you then get also a harmonic version of this, which is only slightly different. If you turn to the data table in the notes view, you get the closeness here in the third column from the right. So usually you get all four values. You get the eccentricity, the closeness, the harmonic closeness, and the betweenness. The closeness is in this part here. As we can see, all these values are larger than zero. In other words, there is no node which is totally separate from the network. So all nodes are actually part of our network. This looks slightly different if we use the other network because it's much easier to have disjoint parts if you have a directed network. Statistics-wise, we still use the same command. I'll just do this again. I can again select between directed and undirected, so treat the directed data as it is, or if I click on undirected, treat the links as if they were going both ways. Get the same results as before. If I switch back to the data table, here I have my statistics, and what I see in this case, that's actually the interesting thing, here the node number P4 has a closeness centrality of zero. So in other words, it's more or less separate from the network. In other words, it's pretty impossible to reach it. Uh, sorry, uh, to go anywhere from it. That's because if we take a look here, the P2 and P3 actually point to 4. So we can get to P4, but there's no edge with P4 as a source. So it's impossible to get to any other node from P4. This leads to P4 having a closeness of zero. On the other hand, for these two parts, for P3 and P2, I have a closeness of one meaning I can reach any other node starting at P3 or P2. And I can directly reach any other node. And well, that's then 
already everything I wanted to mention regarding closeness centrality on how to calculate this either by hand by using the formula or by using Gephi. As I said, that's it. So I hope you enjoyed. I'm saying goodbye and see you next time.